Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing good. So in the last video, we talked about the forgetting curve, the theoretical aspect of it. Now in today's video, we'll talk about the practical aspect of it. Because right now, it's practical season and let's do some practical stuff. So we will be talking about how we can implement space repetition into our workflow. And I'll divide the video into three parts. Firstly, we'll talk about how we can implement it within one study session. Then we'll talk about how we can implement it within one day. And finally, over the course of days. Here, I'll also talk about Notion and how it has helped me to make this revision timetable. So firstly, let's talk about what we can do within one study session, how we can implement space repetition in one study session. Usually what happens when we start studying is that we'll open the textbook, we'll take the first page of the topic, and then we'll just start studying. Just right there, we'll start. The problem with this approach is that we don't know what to emphasize on. We don't know what is important. And we ultimately, uh, at least in my case, end up reading the introduction part for 30 minutes. So what I would suggest is that the first time you read something, I call this the rough read, try to focus on getting a big picture of that topic. Try to get a broad overview of the topic. What I mean is that try reading or focus on the headings and focus on the titles of each subtopic within, within that topic. Also while doing this, mark those areas which have been previously asked in the exam so you can know that these are the areas where you need to emphasize on. This should probably take around 10 to 15 minutes and you would have gone through the whole topic right now once. So next coming to smooth read. This time go over the topic like you normally would you know reading the whole topic uh, and making notes. One thing to note is that while going through the whole topic you know there might be some areas where uh, you might get stuck on. Areas where you need to build your concepts. So instead of trying to grasp your head around that concept, what I would suggest is that just leave it for now and try finishing the whole topic. Now coming to find read. This is where, as the name suggests, you can go over those areas where you had previously trouble on. Also you can go over the nitty gritty details of the topic um, and fill in those holes, so to speak. So you see what we have done is that we have gone over the material multiple times, whereas normally we would go over the topic just once in that same given time. So next coming to how we can implement spaced repetition in a single day. So back in the days, my normal schedule was something like this. I would start really strong, really enthusiastic, and I would just slice through topic one. Topic two was also fairly simple because you know, the drill slice and dice. Then comes to topic three. Um, topic three is a whole another story because topic three is sleepy time. It was porcelain, so I would usually doze off uh, halfway through topic three. Lastly, coming to topic four, I would just read it in the hopes of getting something in my brain. That's all about it. So at the end of the day, I might be really happy because I finished four topics, but we know for the fact that topic one and two are on the verge of, why? Because, because the first time you study something, you know how the graph goes, right? The forgetting curve, it is exponential. If you remember the first time you study something, the graph goes like, And the next day, it's gone. All the time and effort that we put to study topic one and two, we don't want that to go in vain. No, we don't want. So we have to structure our day in such a way that you know we prevent this downward uh, plummeting of information. Uh, it's, it's something we have to work on. Something we have to keep in mind. So what I do is that I would do topic one, you know, slice and dice. Topic two, easy peasy. Before going to topic three, I would actually recall or try to review what I had studied in topic one. So this way I would test myself on topic one and I would write all the things that I know about topic one in a blank sheet of paper. And the best part is that reviewing topic one and testing yourself on topic one is not as sleep provoking as studying a new topic that is topic three. So it's a win-win for everyone. This is a small tweak that you can do. Uh, it's a small thing, but it makes a huge difference in the way we study because you know no one wants the Anyways, while reading the topic, one thing to note is that uh, always test yourself, you know, don't simply reread the same topic, instead test yourself, you know, this is the most important part. So guys, now coming to Notion, which is arguably one of the best productivity apps out there and my favorite one too. In Notion, you can create pages. A page is basically a platform where you can add whatever information that you want. So here I have created a page called Notion for revision for you guys. 
and within this page I have created a database. A database is basically a visual representation of the information that we have put inside a page. So quickly I'll just show you how to create this setup. So here on the left hand side um, I can just create a new page here okay and I'll add name notion and I can just start right here. To add a database just type slash and you can see the various kinds of information that we can add into this one page. We can add text, we can add another page, then we can add these headings and uh, toggle list, number list, bullet list and towards the bottom you can see here this is a database. So you can view the information in a table format, in a board format, in a gallery format etc. So right now we'll just click board. So you see here we have created this database called board database. So we'll just go back here. So I have customized this board view specifically for revision. Over the left hand side you can see all these topics that I've added. Then on the right hand side you can see the uh, these columns. The 1x4, 2x4, 3x4. This refers to how well you actually recall the information after you had tested yourself on the information. Suppose I studied acute otitis media today and I reviewed it the next day and let's say I recall the information very well. So I would put it as a 2x4 or a 3x4. Now I reviewed astigmatism but I couldn't recall the information very well. So I would put it under 1x4. So these numbers basically represent how well you recall the information and you can allocate correspondingly. Now as you go on making multiple topics, so after a couple of days when you want to come back to the information, you can know which ones you need to study and which ones you have been thorough with. That is how this revision timetable can help you. As I have mentioned earlier, each of these cards are actually pages. So you can click the pages and here you can add the information that you want. Let's say there's a topic within astigmatism that you found hard. So you can mention about it over here. Now I have only touched the surface on what you can actually do in Notion. But my humble request is that please to check Notion out. Because recently Notion has become completely free for personal use. And even if this revision layout didn't actually resonate with you, you know, it's, it's totally fine because there are lots of other productive stuff that you can do in Notion. And I genuinely think that um, it will help you. So space repetition is actually coming back to the information again and again and reinforcing it. But on top of that, I think the real beauty is that every time you come back to the information, something new pops up, a new idea pops up. You can create new links with existing knowledge. If you stayed this far into the video, I just want to say thank you. If this video added some value to your life, please give it a like. A simple click would make up for all the effort that was put into this video. And if you wish to support the channel, please do consider subscribing because you guys are the motivation. With that being said, I'll see you in the next one.